Okay, you guys, what is up? The King of Lightning is here today to do One Piece Chapter 709 review. That is 7-9. Now, listen, man. Yo. Yo. Listen. Yo. King Punch. I mean, Lord have mercy. Like, I, I just... Oh, because I knew that this guy was hype. I mean, like he. So, so, so. First of all, first of all, let me just start by saying that it appears that what what he what he did to that fortress, it appears that in fact, it was from a long range standpoint. Uh, the shockwave of his punch went through like a fortress, and oh, like, it was just like yo, man. Yo, fucking greenhorns, king, punch. <laughs> yeah, son. I mean, and 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 like the shockwave blew out everybody from the stadium, except for one guy, Bartolomeo. Oh, body, body, no me. And he's a barrier man. All right, so yeah, I was right. He's a barrier man. All right, he's rocking barriers. All right. Of course, he's a paramecia type, obviously. And I'm not gonna lie to you, like. I really thought that Bellamy was gonna win this shit. Like even Luffy was cheering on Bellamy. Like I thought that the moment Luffy cheered on Bellamy, I thought that he was gonna make a make like a comeback, and then he was going to like wind up winning the entire thing. That's what I thought. But no, 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 no. Bartolomeo, he wins it. He wins it. So I was wrong on that one. All right. So Bellamy did not win the competition of Block B. Bartolomeo did. And I'm not glad to you. I'm very impressed. I'm because because like the, the chapter overall is very simple, right? It's basically like the fight that proceeds on. Uh, what ends up happening? So let me go a little bit of a play action here, right? Basically, in a general scene, it's a lot of hype on the blue gilly guy, the guy from the long leg tribe, uh, pulling up all these kicks, and literally he's beating like a lot of these dudes. He winds up taking out uh, Ricky and uh, Dagama. Now, Ricky, apparently he's an old guy, all right? Apparently, we don't know his backstory, but that's another subplot, because Oda likes to put in a lot of subplots, a lot of subplots into the actual main plot. And the subplot here is the fact that this old guy, Ricky, he has some history with, uh, of course, Don Flamingo, probably the, Flam the uh, Flamingo family, as well as uh, the stadium itself. Um, and, well, the, the, the thing about him is that apparently... Uh, he hates the cheers of the people around him. He hates the Flamingo family. Because, uh, but, but whatever. The fact of the matter is that he got his ass beat by Blue Gilly. That's the fact. He got his ass beat. He got kicked, and the kick literally went like right through his freaking armor. Like, yo, fuck you. So he got taken out. And then after that, what ends up happening is that we go over to the Gama, right? And then the Gama, he's uh, playing his part. Of course, he's you know he has these guys on a string. The guys who are protecting. Uh, uh, King Elizabeth and uh, the guy himself and then what's happening is that those guys believe that once there was a certain number of them left They were gonna like disperse and fight each other. No, that's not the plan The plan was blue Gilly comes from, he comes from behind and he takes out two dudes and Then when they go after blue Gilly the Gama betrays them and he literally backstabbed all these dudes Okay, so uh, I mean and this is pretty obvious because you know, even though he's a strategist. He's a evil dude He's a dick. So you know Backstab, 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 and then, at, well, and then after that, what's what winds up happening is that from that point on, it's literally okay. So now we need to go after fucking Elizabeth and Dagama, and Blue Gilly appears to be on their side, but he's not, because after Blue Gilly portrays the role that he's on Dagama's side, Dagama's gonna backstab him, but Blue Gilly's like no, and he pulls the Bruce Lee, he does the high kick right to freaking Dagama's neck, like. Mm. And then he goes flying out of the ring. And of course, we have the uh, fighting fish that come in there. Mm, fuck you, all right? So now in the ring, who we have here. And at that same time, at that same time, Bellamy goes after Bartolomeo, but he's not successful at all. And he is being confronted by Bartolomeo's ability. And the, the thing about Bartolomeo that, that's actually very cool about, about his ability is that he can have his hands in his pockets. But as long as his fingers are crossed, he'll never be hit because he has these barriers, all right? And the barriers can also, like, reflect damage back at you. So Bellamy's being, like, you know, he's he's basically uh, uh, trying to, 
you know, assess what's going on here. At some point, he, at some point, like before Elizabeth goes in, he actually grabs Bartolomeo by the uh, sleeve of his shirt, and then so like right here, and then he so he's about to attack him full force. But before then, what's happening is that after the Gama's taken out. Blue Gilly and a few of the guys, they target Elizabeth. They're like, yeah, yeah, yeah. So, you know, now that your henchmen are, are here to, to, like, protect you, you're going to get ass fucked. We're literally going to take this shit, and we're going to sodomize you, like, fuck it. And it's like, okay, so now there's a problem here. However, the hype was legit. That's the problem. The problem was the hype was legit. He's literally like a one-punch wonder. He's like... Like, this dude, literally, so what ends up happening is that, oh, and th this was crazy, man. Like, this was nuts, because all of a sudden, he's like, he's laughing. He's like, you know, he's like, yeah, yeah. He's because like, he's, he's always warming up. He's like, yeah, 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 yeah. And then he's like, you know, like, you did well, Tagama. And now, and then he says something along the lines of, now all you do is cut loose. And so Blue Gilly's like, you know, he's like, what the fuck's going on? Like we're like we're here to you're like we're gonna kill like we're gonna kill you and we're gonna beat you and then you're gonna just you know be taken out of the competition period and he's like you know nah man no greenhorns no and this dude he literally cocks back he's like king so I'm thinking oh okay, here it comes all right and I was literally expecting some kind of flop I really was but no this guy cocks back king. And then at the same time, again, I talked about how the people, no, I talked about how, you know, Bellamy and Bartolomeo, they were fighting against each other. At that point in time, all of a sudden, it's like Bellamy and Bartolomeo, they look at, like, what, you know, uh, Elizabeth was doing. And then, the, and, like, they feel, like, an aura around them. Like, there's some kind of aura, some kind of energy being emitted from this guy. And at the same time, there are people in the stands, they're realizing, wait a second, is this is the guy... Where he was on the news, where apparently he blew through an entire enemy fortress away with one punch, and they're like, "No, bullshit, bullshit." But one guy's like, "Wait a second. But if this is true, wouldn't the entire section of the stadium be fucking leveled?" And they're like, "Possibly." So they all, so all these dudes all had. They got out of the area. They got out of the crosswire. This guy, and then as Blue Gilly and the others are rushing this guy, he just cocks back. Punch you. Yeah. And literally, the snap, the snap from his fist created a huge shockwave. And this thing sent everybody flying. Ricky on the ground got sent flying. Blue Gilly, who, who took the entire force of the punch, he was taken out. Bellamy was taken out. Everybody in the vicinity was taken out. Everybody in the entire stadium felt the force. However, the section of the stadium that he was initially targeting was fine. It wasn't wasteland. And the reason why, according to the commentator, Gotts, good name, is because Bartolomeo blocked it. He negated all the force with this barrier. And then he all he does is barrier crush. And then Elizabeth's taken out. And that's the end of block B. And the winner is Bartolomeo. Son. That was nice. That was very nice. I was, the way Oda did that with the king punch. Because think about it. Like, if this guy was as powerful as you know they say. And he is. He would have wasted the entire stadium. And that would have been disastrous. And they would, that would involve Marines and so on and so forth. You know, Fujitora come in there, you know, what's, what's going on here? Um, maybe CP0. But the thing about it is that he Oda played in a way where the force of the attack is equivalent to the hype that he received at the beginning of the fight, of the competition. But it was negated because of Bartolomeo and, and his ability. Because he can reflect and like, and, like, negate damage, period, with his barriers. So, and that's what he did. And that's why he was the only guy left remaining. So it was very nice the way Oda uh, played that out. Now the question is, can that punch knock out a Yoko? A, uh, I mean, a, a Yonko? Um, uh, uh, maybe. I don't know. Probably not. And the reason why I say that is because of the fact that, you know, 
Like, even though it, it's an impressive, like, if it hits cleanly, like, not far away, but if it hits cleanly in, like, the jaw, I mean, I don't know. Because, again, the, like, Blackbeard has gone through a significant power increase for the past two years. Shanks is feetless. Well, no, he's not feetless, but he's, his feet are minimal at best. Kaido and Big Man are both feetless. And according to my statistic, Kaido and Big Man are like the weakest amongst the Yonko. And that's, I mean, that's what I see. I mean, according to law, Kaido is the strongest thing on the planet. But does that mean physical strength or overall strength? I mean, according to law statistic, Kaido may be the strongest of the Yonko. But I doubt that. Because Shanks could take on Whitebeard. And even though Whitebeard was sick, he can do it one-handed. It was like, you know, I mean, he, he only has one hand. But we saw what happened when they met. You know, Whitebeard fucking, yeah, Shanks, yeah, whatever. I, I got it. So, can that punch take out a Yonko? I mean, I don't know. I really don't know. I mean, according to Legend, like, these guys had the power to, like, destroy. I mean, like, if you want a power scale from Chin Zhao back in the day, this guy could destroy fucking continents. So... You would think that you need a lot more to knock out a Yonko. E even if it's cleanly hit, you would think you need a lot more. Because if Garp... Because think about it. I mean, like, you know, Goldie Roger and Whitebeard and Garp and, you know, guys like Shiki and um, Sengoku back in that day are probably, like, the equivalent to, like, the modern-day power scale of the Yonkon right now. I mean, and that's my uh, estimation because Whitebeard, he's only sick. I mean, granted, we never saw him at full power because A, and during the Whitebeard War, he never actually went full power because he had to go save Ace and make, and make sure that his uh, subordinates were okay, so he never actually went all out. And then B, he was sick to begin with, so he couldn't go at full power regardless. So, I mean, there's a lot of things that we just don't know about, you know, because there's a lot of limitations, and that's the key thing about Oda. He puts a lot of limitations on, like, the maximum power scale scheme of One Piece. And we just don't... I mean, for all we know, Dragon could be the most powerful dude on the planet. We just don't know. So, can it knock out a Yonko? I mean, uh, a Yonko, as of right now, I have to say, it's in the realm of reason, but it's a probably not. That's what I'm going to say. Because, you know, again, according to Chin Zhao, who could bust continents with headbutts and gore was stronger than his ass, then I'm just saying. But again, that's also assuming that the Yonkon, that the Yonko of now are on the same level as the uh, guys in the, back in the day. Which, I think we can, as, yeah, we, we can probably say for Shanks, and, you know, uh, Blackbeard, uh, yeah, I mean, he has, he has Whitebeard's Elf Fruit, so, yeah, yeah, yeah. But yeah, I mean, hockey-wise, I doubt it, though. Because he's not really hockey-versed, as far as I know. When it, comes, when it comes to black men. But either way, moving on, moving on. And then the end of the chapter, it ends off with Frankie talking to the toy soldier. Toy soldier, step by step. On the okay, moving on. <laughs> Basically, this toy soldier, apparently, he has associates. And these associates have been gunning for the factory for a long time. And Frankie wants to just simply blow the shit up. He's like, no, no, no. We need to save the people inside the factory. And then we need to create this chain reaction which will bring the downfall of this country. And then apparently this toy soldier is going to explain to Frankie the history of this country. So that's where we're going right now. And it's very intriguing because, again, it's another subplot. Like, Oda puts in a lot. Like, this arc has particularly a lot of subplots, all right? Fishman Island had, like, a few subplots. Punk Hazard had a few subplots. But this has a lot of subplots going on. A lot of subplots. So... I'm very curious, because, you know, there's a lot of things that we need to find out. And, I mean, we'll see where that goes. We really will. Because um, right now, there's going to be a little break between the matches of Block B and Block C. And that means that we're probably going to go follow the story of either Law and what he's doing in his group. We may even go back to what the uh, guys on the ship are doing. Because, remember, apparently there's someone on the ship right now, on the Sunny Go. So, we may go back over there, or, or we may go... And see what Zoro's doing with the fairies or Sanji with uh, Violet. We don't know. But, um, at what, you know, like, at, at some point, all these things are going are to wind up coming together. At least that's why I see things. But uh, the chapter overall. Okay. The chapter overall is very, again, it's a very simple chapter. Very straightforward chapter. But nonetheless, nonetheless, it's still a good chapter. 
I'll give it to you. Yeah, it's, it's a good chapter, man, because listen, man, this arc has done a lot for, uh, you know, show, showcasing where the New World standings are right now. Uh, Elizabeth... King? Yeah. Yeah. This arc so far is nice. It's very nice arc. Very nice. So, so the question is now... Okay. So, Bellamy's... Not, not Bellamy. Bartolomeo says something. When he beats, you know, everyone, he says something... Because, you know, like, everyone, like, they're booing his ass, like, you know, fuck you, man, fuck you. And he says something to the crowd after he wins. And he says, the Mary Mary know me belongs to that person. Quote, unquote, that person. Again, another subplot. It's like, so, are you working for somebody? Like, I mean, is there someone behind the scenes here? Now, for some reason, people... People tell me that Bartolomeo is somehow, is somehow related to Bartholomew Kuma. I don't see it, but whatever. E either way, either way. So there's another supply here that's being chucked in. So where this goes, again, I don't know. Because Oda, he's very sporadic sometimes when it comes to his, you know, working. And the way he depicts a story sometimes can be hard to follow. So I'm not going to try and guess as to what's going to happen. I'll just wait and see. So I'm done. Overall chapter, rating for, overall chapter rating for this week's chapter one piece is going to be a good. And I'm signing out. Be sure, of course, rate, comment, and subscribe as always. Peace. Have a nice day.